Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we will study about one more important topic of renal physiology that is acid base balance. Okay, uh, so here we will be talking about only renal acid base balance. Otherwise, if you get question of acid base balance, you have to answer three buffer system in our body, right? So first is the buffer system of blood. Okay, blood buffer system contains the buffers of bicarbonate buffer system, phosphate in blood and protein buffers. Protein buffers are basically albumin and hemoglobin. Okay, uh, apart from blood, uh, there is respiratory buffer system, which is the, nothing but the regulation of CO2 level in our body via changing the ventilation rate. So, whatever we have read in uh, the chemical regulation of respiration. Okay, so increase in CO2 will uh, cause hyperventilation and hence the CO2 washout and hence the carbonic acid washout. So, acid washout, right? So, this is also a buffer system in our body. The last buffer system is the renal buffer system which we will be discussing in this video. So if you get a renal buffer system or renal acid base balance or acid base balance by kidney. So the answer is same right. So let's start the video. So how kidney basically prevent acidosis in our body. It's by two mechanisms. One is the bicarbonate uh, reabsorption and second is the H positive secretion. Okay. So how the kidney will do it. We'll see one by one. Second, uh, second thing is uh, this is the concentration, this is the filter load of uh, bicarbonate ions uh, when the plasma is filtered into glomerulus and Bowman capsule, this is the amount of bicarb which is entering the with the filtrate, right? So the, approx 100% of bicarb the kidney is going to reabsorb because we need bicarb more in our body compared to H positive, okay? Coming to H positive, this is the filtered load. In this filtered load, basically only 50 to 100 milli equivalent per liter H positive uh, amount is basically going to be secreted, means excreted from kidney. Okay, rest is basically reused in HCO3 negative reabsorption. So, do you think uh, this H positive is basically helping in bicarbonate reabsorption? We'll see how. Okay, so to answer this question, how you are going to answer this question is basically you have to categorize the renal buffers in three categories. One is the bicarbonate buffer system, second is the phosphate buffer system and third is the ammonia buffer system. So, one by one, we'll see how the H positive secretion and bicarb reabsorption occur. Okay, so first is the bicarbonate buffer system. Bicarbonate buffer system mostly occur in PCT. We have seen although in last videos, if you have seen my videos series of renal physiology, you have seen how where the bicarbonate reabsorption occur and H positive secretion occur. So you have seen that although you can recollect that information today in this video and let's start with the bicarbonate buffer system. So this is a renal tubule. This is tubule. Okay. This is the cell of the tubule. Okay. And this is the blood vessel. Fine. Okay. So what happens basically? We know that there is sodium hydrogen exchanger present for sodium reabsorption everywhere. Right. So for in exchange with sodium, H positive is secreted. Fine. So from where this H positive come? So basically, water inside the cell combines with CO2 to form carbonic acid, okay? And this carbonic acid breaks down into H positive, H positive and HCO3 negative with the help of this enzyme carbonic anhydrase, okay? So basically, this bicarbonate ion, we have seen in last videos that this bicarbonate is basically sodium dependent. Bicarb absorption in PCT is sodium dependent. So mostly that's why mostly it occur in PCT, the, this buffer system. Although there is also some in DCT as well. Okay. So and loop of Henle, ascending loop of Henle and DCT. So these are the areas where this buffer system comes into play. So ultimately bicarb absorption occur and sodium absorption occur. Now what happens with H positive? So bicarb ion or soda bicarb. So the sodium came in either in form of soda bicarb or separate bicarb ion. They comes in tubule and combine with this H positive. So how the kidney is helping here that this is helping in H positive secretion in urine. Okay. So it basically combine 
uh, with H positive to form again carbonic acid and now this carbonic acid converted into water and CO2. So here CO2 can enter into the cell and again recycle the process and water can be excreted. Okay, so that's why I am saying that H positive is helping in bicarbonate excretion and that's why the most of H positive is being used in bicarb reabsorption. Okay, so that's how this is all about bicarbonate buffer system. Next coming to the phosphate buffer system. So how phosphate buffer system occur, how it basically help in H positive excretion is also same as the bicarb. The only difference here is this sodium is this sodium is coming basically in form of Na2HPO4 disodium hydrogen phosphate so this phosphate is now helping in H positive uh, excretion how so sodium is going to be reabsorbed in exchange of H positive again I don't have to repeat from where you get H positive here this is from the cell water and CO2 form carbonic acid and form H positive and HCO3 negative which is reabsorbed with the help of sodium okay and again this H positive is going to combine with this HPO4 okay so it combined with HPO4 and what it makes H2PO4 it H2PO4 negative so it combined with some salt here say sodium and become NaH2PO4 okay and this NaH2PO4 is excreted into urine fine making it acidic fine so this is all about phosphate buffer system so phosphate is helping in H positive excretion then the last buffer system is the ammonia buffer system ammonia buffer so what it does is basically again when sodium comes in filtrate it is reabsorbed in exchange with H positive one from where H positive come again this is the same process carbonic acid which break into H positive and HCO3 negative and it is reabsorbed with the help of sodium okay so H positive in exchange with sodium it is excreted or secreted into tubule fine now what happens here in ammonia buffer system is here in tubule glutamine is present okay in presence of glutaminase this glutamine is converted into glutamic acid and ammonia fine this NH3 is uh, secreted into tubule now this NH3 is helping in excretion of this H positive ion here so NH3 combined with H positive and form ammonium now this ammonium is excreted into urine okay so that's how these three buffer system help in H positive excretion ultimately okay so pH of plasma which is filtering in the Bowman capsule it's around 7.3 to 7.4 right but a urine pH is 6 this is because of these acids being excreted okay so that's how you have to answer the acid base balance of kidney it's very easy okay then the last is applied aspect we know that there is less than 7 is the acid uh, acidic pH and more than 8 is the basic pH so whenever acidosis occur you don't have to confuse which type of acidosis is it is respiratory and metabolic acidosis same division for alkalosis respiratory and metabolic so let's see how to differentiate this so respiratory acidosis respiratory acidosis occurs when there is increase in co2 level in our body fine increase in co2 level when it can occur increase in co2 co2 can accumulate in our body when there is a decrease in respiratory rate when we hypoventilate okay so hypoventilation is the cause okay for co2 accumulation now co2 accumulation how it increases the h positive it basically again form in the same process it combined with water form h2co3 negative and again break into h positive and hco3 negative so h positive increases here okay so that is the reason that acidosis occur when there is increase in co2 level and hence there is reduced reduction in ph coming to metabolic metabolic when we are the acidosis is not because of co2 collection 
but it is because of acid collection in our body because of metabolic processes okay so these can be lactic acid for example uh, in lack of oxygen we are doing exercise so lactic acid is okay ketoacidosis can happen like in diabetes ketoacidosis occur so diabetic ketoacidosis is the example then uric acid accumulation okay so in these conditions there is metabolic acidosis so there is increase in acid h positive concentration increase and ph reduces fine so this is metabolic acidosis coming to alkalosis alkalosis is obviously there is increase reduction in h positive and that's why we have increase in hco3 negative fine so when it can occur if we talk about respiratory one respiratory that means there is less co2 level in our body and when we can have less co2 level when we hyperventilate increase in respiratory rate we hyperventilate when we hyperventilate we wash out all the co2 when we wash out all co2 there is less carbonic acid form less carbonic acid mean less h positive right so again there is less h positive and hence we have high ph okay so ph is increase in alkalosis this way so that's why we can say this is respiratory alkalosis coming to metabolic alkalosis where h positive don't accumulate but it is excreted in large amount from our body in that scenario there is alkalosis at co3 negative concentration increases how so metabolic acidosis when it can occur for example there is tubal disorder excretion of h positive increases so tubal disorder or git disorder like diarrhea which leads to h positive excretion or thyroid diuretics which can cause h positive excretion okay so these are the example of metabolic alkalosis where we don't have h positive uh, or we can have less h positive that's how we have high ph okay so that is metabolic alkalosis i hope you enjoyed this video you have understood the concept if you have any query you can comment below so this is all about acid base balance if you are interested in hindi video or english videos you can visit my channel physiology hacks where all english videos are available thank you so much for watching please subscribe if you like my videos thank you so much bye bye